To the stage now, we invite the 1960-61 Amherst Ramblers. Gentlemen. I don't believe it's coincidence that Danky is standing as far as humanly possible away from me. Okay. It won't be Danky. You guys going to leave the seat vacant? <laughs> Mo wants no part of the chair. Let's get rolling. They played in a small town in a big new stadium with a roster dotted with new exciting players. They had financial woes common to many senior hockey teams of the era, of the 1950s and 1960s. And the Amherst Ramblers proved that small can be mighty, a new stadium can be a boon to a team and community, that a new club can bring energy, and that a small town spirit can overcome money problems. Competing in the five-team Nova Scotia Senior Hockey League, the Ramblers won 32 and tied one of 40 regular season games. They raced through the provincial and maritime playdowns, losing once in 15 games. In the Eastern Canadian Allen Cup semifinal, Amherst won three of four from Granby, Quebec in a best of five series. Galt Ontario Terriers were next. The Ramblers were 49-9-1 heading into that Allen Cup semifinal. For a time, though, there was a chance the series would not be played. The Ramblers were out of money. The players agreed to go without pay for a week, but that wouldn't make much of a dent in the cost of a series to be played in its entirety in Galt. An emergency campaign raised $2,000 in 24 hours, and the trip was back on. Four games later, the Ramblers were on their way home, despite losing Game 3 in the final minute, and Game 4 on a goal scored with 23 seconds left in the first overtime period and Galt that went on to win the national title. Frank Guthrow was a defensive forward on a team that stressed defense because the playing coach, Jacques Manette, was a goalie who didn't want a zillion pucks fired his way each night. And here's Frank. People in Amherst really uh, appreciated the, the, uh, the caliber of hockey, and plus they appreciated uh, winning for a change. And uh, that, that made it pleasing to the, to the fans. And winning usually breeds good crowds. The Ramblers, playing in a gleaming new arena that replaced one destroyed by fire two years earlier, drew numbers that were adequate enough to keep the team financially afloat during the regular season, but as you just heard, in constant hot water as the playoffs extended. But fans were able to see a collection of players from Quebec, New Brunswick, and the hometown that included wily veterans like Shermie White and Frank Dorrington, both members of the Nova Scotia Sport Hall of Fame, as individual athletes and younger players like Guthrow, who was just 23. I really appreciated playing for the, for the Ramblers, being only a, I was 22, I think, at the time when I joined the Ramblers in 59, and 23 uh, in, in the, the, uh, the 60 team. And uh, it was a real pleasure to play with guys that were tough and talented. And I often said to people afterwards, I'm really glad that I'm playing for these guys and not against them. Hap Hansen is a name and a man who played against the Ramblers at a time when he was with the Halifax Wolverines. Well, they were a tough team, but I think their depth is probably what made them very good. Uh, Jock Manette, their goaltender, was an excellent goaltender. Uh, they had uh, defenseman Jim McLean, who I played with uh, in Sydney as a junior. Um, Lou Kiley, uh, Red Mullins, an excellent defenseman, Roger Legere and Ralph Shepard, both fine defensemen, and up front they had three balanced lines that could both score and play defensive hockey and also tough hockey. They had a couple of uh, chaps on the team by the name of Malone, Danny and Russ Malone, and they were always in fights and tough. Uh, Lou Kiley was a tough player, Dave Kiley, his brother, was an also another tough guy. Frankie Guthrow, every time I hit him, he hurt me. 
So, you know, they had a tough team. They were hard to play against. It was no fun playing against them. <laughs> Guthro agrees that his club was very good and, of course, very deep as well. What made this team good? Uh, talent, for one thing. Uh, grit and determination. A real bunch of tough, tough hockey players. And uh, they played very, very well as a team. Among those players were defenseman Jim McLean, Lou Kiley, Red Mullins, Ralph Shepard, and Danny Malone. Forwards White and Mo Lamoran tied for league scoring honors. Linemate Dave Kiley was considered the team's spark plug. Dorrington, Bill Payne, and Jerry Boss of Spring Hill formed the second line, while well, Roger Legier, Dick Van Snick, and Russ Malone made up the third line. Forwards Guthrow, Gilles Picard, and Sam Gregory completed the roster. And despite the scrappy attitude of some of the players, Hap Hansen recalls the veteran White as being a gentleman on the ice. The humorous side to him, humorous uh, Shermie. I can remember one day or one night we were playing them and uh, he got a fluky goal that went in off his rear end or something. And when we come back to center ice to face off, I said to him, I said, Shermie, you're not going to take that goal, are you? And he said, Hap, he said, you take the good ones, I'll take the bad ones, and I'll beat you every time. And he was right. And Guthrow takes a look back now at the enthusiasm of the fans in the season's late stages. He says the team traveled by train, rented an entire car, and many fans joined them for the trip. Well, they were, uh, they, they were happy that we had gone that far. And, uh, and they showed it. They gave us a big banquet uh, when we got back home. And uh, if I recall, there was a, a motor uh, parade or something of that nature. But they, they appreciated what had happened through the year. And... Uh, most of the fans that came there were knowledgeable about hockey and, uh, and had watched hockey over the years. So consequently, they knew really that that team had done real well. So ladies and gentlemen, this aggregation skated through its league with ease, ran the table in the playoffs until the Allen Cup semifinal. And as Guthrow said later, it might have been different if we had played that series in our own backyard. So please join us tonight in congratulating the newest members of the Nova Scotia Sport Hall of Fame, the Amherst Ramblers, 1960-61. And to make the presentations, we'd like to ask Kirk Swales of Clary Fleming and Associates, whose staff edited and prepared tonight's video presentation. And for the pin, we'd like to call on a man who knew the Ramblers intimately from the corners to the centers of the ice. He probably fought with most of them during that special year. He played with the Halifax Wolverines, and tonight we ask no fights, just some hugs up here. Mr. Ken McConey. Ken, if you could come forward, listen to these guys. They're saying, oh, no, not Ken. Ken's going to present, here he comes. <laughs>